Hi, in this lesson we're going to learn a little bit about GIMP. When you create renderings, uh, it's only going to create an image that AutoCAD or Revit or 3ds Max is going to be able to do. You're probably going to want to compost the foreground that's coming from your renderings to a background, and the best place to do that is in a photo editing program. GIMP is free. I've, this is GIMP, and I've got it set up in single window mode. I'll show you what we're going to create. We're going to create the poster that looks like this. And this poster has four layers. And this layer has the base picture. I don't, I made a mistake in putting this group of things on that layer. We're going to correct that. And then on top of that, we've got the flag. The flag has a, a, an, a mask attached to it that is able to you're able to draw on and control the transparency it's also got an opacity setting and it's got a mode setting that affects how it looks uh, we have text and we have a person that we put in to make it look real these symbols are laid out on a grid just to make it look organized but you could do a free form arrangement if you prefer. To simulate images that are coming from rendering and background, we're going to do image searches. I'm on images.google.com and I'm going to say Paris. And I'm going to use keywords here Eiffel, 15, Tanya, because I'm, I'm going to use the same picture I used before. Once you pick a picture, Google finds images that look a lot like it and shows you the alternatives or more. I'm, I like this one, so I'm going to right click and save image as and just save it to my GIMP project. Next, I need a French flag. I'm going to choose this one, it's big enough, but don't save the image of the thumbnail, save the larger image. Save image as French flag and now some French symbols. A fleur de lis looks good. Let's save that image as F L E U R. Next let's get a star and Click on that one, save that image as a star. So now I've got my images. I'm going to open the base image and convert. Next, I'm going to open as layers the French flag and move using the active layer, move that up, and then scale. Pick the upper corner here, and let's, I want to use an, uh, an unlinked proportion change. So I'm going to keep that, break that link, it's going to drag that corner straight down to there, scale it, and then control the opacity a little bit. So let's just drag that. So I'm just going to type in 80. Sometimes it doesn't want to drag. If that looks a little too close to you, as if there's not enough white space there, you can do a scale again. I'm going to let you do that. But I would suggest a base point in the middle and then just scale it wider. So next, we need to go ahead and add a layer mask. And by doing this, we can draw, and whatever we draw can control the transparency. Next, I need to use the free select tool, and I'm going to use a maybe a 50 or 60 pixel feathering. And just at the tree line, just click, click. Click, click, 
and I'm going to go way down here, out here, click, click, way off here. So it has a nice sharp edge there, and the, there's no feathering on these edges. Next, use the blend tool, pick the bottom of the image, and, and drag straight out without letting go of the mouse. And notice it, it feathers the flag, so the flag almost doesn't exist at the bottom, and it's slow, slowly coming in. The, and the feathering, I'm going to control A, the feathering keeps a hard edge from showing up here. Next, I need to open the. Well, I don't have one. Let's let's find a uh, the person. Let's, I'm gonna go put a person in there. So posing people. Now, for you, I suggest finding a a person if you can. It has a nice white background, so you can clip the background out of the person easier. I'm going to go the hard way. We'll pick this image and save this image as uh, a woman posing. Now I'm going to use GIMP to open up that picture. It has a lot of detail. It's a little harder to work with smaller images because it's hard to see what the pixels mean. But this is so clear I can I can look back here and get it. Now I don't want any feathering on the edges so I'm just going to go zero and just pick as tight as I can to what I say. I'm trying to avoid if you want to zoom in uh, you want to alt zoom in and try to and you can try to pick up the hairs if you want although I don't really think you need to Middle mouse button pan works in GIMP. Try not to get any background. It's okay to go inside, but if you try to if you go outside and, and cut the background, it's going to look weird as you as you crop this in. Since I'm not feathering this, I shouldn't be getting any of the background edges. It's okay to go outside the area. Trying to get the ribbon. The more work you do here, the less work you have to do later. Trying not to get any background. Once you shrink this image down it's going to be very very small. In fact I may want to shrink this image down before I put it in GIMP. Otherwise it's probably going to be too big for my other image. So now I've got everything cropped out there, but I want to invert that because I've selected her and either I can keep her or I can delete everything else. So I could cut and paste this as a layer or I can invert it and do everything here. Let's go ahead and cut and paste. So I'm going to copy that selection and go ahead and put it in the new as a new layer. So in order to do that, you edit paste as new layer. Unfortunately, see it's too big, so I undo that. Go back to the original image. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and so invert the selection and hit the delete key. But what I need to do now is just scale the whole image. So Control A which selects everything. GIMP only operates on what you select. And I'm going to scale and pick here. And we're going to scale the entire image down proportionally.
that's big that's enough so now I go around that select tool control a and then I need to oh gotta I'll delete that layer and be on this new layer it won't work if you're on a floating selection again we're trying to get rid of the background I'm going to fuzzy select this and delete. And now I've got to get the background back in here. So go ahead and use the, the on this layer, Control A, pick. So you have to have something in the region that you're going. Delete and let's go in here and pick out that. So it looks more like that person is standing without a background. Control A, Control C, and edit, paste as new layer. She fits, but she needs to be scaled down. So, scale, select anywhere down here, and we're just going to scale her down. Up. That needs to be, let's see, that's, she should have scaled proportionally. There we go. So, let's scale. And then move notice as I move her I need to put her to a new layer and then get rid of the clipboard and now I go back to the layer and put her down on the ground She's still a little too big because her head is above where the eye line would be. So she looks a little big. She could be standing on a hill, but let's fine tune that by scaling the layer. So pick and shrink and scale. So that's closer to where she needs to be. Next, I need to add a shadow for her. To do that, use the clone tool, go back to the Paris layer, and go here and pick the size of maybe four pixels, maybe in here, where you have a dark area where the trees are shady. So I'm picking here, and I'm control selecting here. You gotta press the control key down and pick. So that's where I'm getting the value from. Go back to the transformation layer and I'm going to draw in a shadow. It might be a little too dense. You might be able to see a, a better shadow with maybe a little lighter coloration here. But I think that's okay. So it looks like she's casting a shadow on the ground. Next, go to View, Show Grid, and my grid's pretty big here. The default grid is 10. To control the grid, you configure the grid image control. I'm going to change that to 190. Click OK. And I want to snap to the grid. So snap to the grid needs to be on. Now I need to add a brush. A Lee is a good brush. And, and the, the way to do that, I've already added it before, so I'm going to delete them. 
show you how I'm doing them. So I'm deleting those two brushes and I'm going to open the floor delay. Control A, Control C, and then I'm going to edit paste as new brush. F L F L E U R or E U R and F L E U R and this is the default spacing, so I'm going to click OK. It seems not to have picked the image. So you can see the floor. It looks like a girl to me, so I'm going to delete that brush again. Let's try it again. So I need to select the layer. And let's get on the selection tool. Select the layer. Control A, Control C. Edit, paste as new brush. Click OK. I should see the new brush. Go back here. I'm on the, got to be on the layer mask. And I should be using a paintbrush with that as the brush tool. The next thing I need to do is the size of the paintbrush. And I would suggest maybe 150 pixels. And you can type it in 150. And now you should see like a box. The, the reason I don't see the symbol itself is because I didn't bother uh, creating transparency. So I'm seeing a box. Now when I click on it, it's going to show me the symbol. If you if you take the extra time to delete the background, it might be easier when you start painting. So I'm clicking every other grid point. Now I need to do another, open another layer. So let's open the star. And just to make it look a little different, I'm going to fuzzy select the white and hit the delete key. So I've got to be in fuzzy select white and delete. And I'm, it may be because I need to change the mode. So let's image mode RGB and now delete. Fuzzy select delete. I want to do it. All right, so I'll go color to transparency, color to alpha. Click OK. That's probably going to be OK. So let's control. Control A, Control C, Edit, Paste as New Brush, Star, Star. So now I've got what looks like a star. Going back to this, we'll go back to the brush, pick a new brush, keep the size, and just pick a star in between. So let's put star. In the center of the boxes. Now we need to do some text. So when you do when you change to the text tool, it's going to add a new layer. If you pick the layer you want to add, the, you if you pick a layer, the text will be added above that layer. I'm going to make the size 150 pixels, and I'm going to center the text. 
pick the box from left to right so it goes all the way across and then just start typing should have been centered I'm not sure why it's not centering let's make sure that's center P-A-R-I-S 2018 so there must have been some characters in there I'm going to put a few extra spaces and then click to another layer notice it's there if I wanted to change it just double click on that layer and you can edit the text once you merge the text down it becomes just pixels So I'm not really sure whether I want to keep, let's say, the stars down there. It's kind of weird, but it may be interesting. And that is it. If you decide to do anything else, just remember, to, probably it's a good idea to create a new layer before you do anything so that you can control that layer separately. You can even delete it. So I'm going to create a new layer without naming anything. I'm just going to start drawing here on top of that thing. So, you know, whatever I put in there, if I wanted to, I can turn it off or I can adjust it to make it something different or darken only or dodge. I can do all sorts of effects with these things. Or, most importantly, I can delete the layer. But once you put stuff on the same layer as everything else, it's going to be hard to separate it. You have to bring in a new copy of the original image. Good luck. Finally, you want to save this. Save it as, a, as what you have. It's an XCF file. I'm going to save it as Paris Poster. Mine is going to be number three. And then I want you to upload that. If you want to use this in something else, like an HTML page or in a presentation, you're going to have to export it as an image format that can be understood. So I would recommend you export as a ping or JPG file. I'm exporting it now to show you that when you open that up, all the layers are gone. It's all smashed into one layer. So I'm going to open that up and you see it's just one layer and nothing is separate. Good luck.